Yo, what is poppin' people? It's your boy Out of Order, and welcome back to the tutorial series. This is where I teach you guys everything you need to know about After Effects, and in this video, guys, I will be showing you how to make a lyric video slash kinetic typography edit. So without further ado, guys, let's get right on into the video. So as you guys saw in the preview of this video, I'll be showing you how to make that. So I got a song already imported in here. The link to it will be in the description down below. So anyway, guys, let me show you how to do it. So kinetic typography is pretty simple to do. It's not really that hard to do. I don't really see many people do it in edits. It's more of like for music videos and such. So uh, yeah, this is a song over here. I'll probably only be doing like the first part of the verse or whatever, the like the hook of it. You just want to make sure you got the lyrics for it and everything. So yeah, let me just play it and give it a listen. So we'll start with this bar right here where he says, uh, shoddy wanna talk to me right now. I don't even know you, I'ma smoke loud. So let me show you how to do it. So what I do for this part is I'll get a bunch of text layers and uh, I'll just let you guys know right away that this is, there's gonna be a ton of layers involved because usually some people don't always, some people will use like little expressions or uh, type in presets that were in After Effects, which I'll go over later in the video. But the way I do it is I type out each word individually because you have so much more customization and it's a lot easier to do. So let's just get started right here. So the first word he says is shoddy. The bar is shoddy wanna talk to me right now. The little line he says, which is right here. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a little text effect and you can do that by simply just pressing Control T or by clicking this button over here. And uh, as you can see, we got our text. Uh, I'm gonna unselect it and I'm gonna go back to my little cursor by pressing V. So uh, we're just gonna drag it somewhere on screen so you can see it. So step one for doing kinetic typography is you wanna have the lyrics already typed out and laid out and ready to go. And then step two would be doing the actual motion between it. And then step three would be adding the effects. So now that we got our first text effect already in, we can go over here and then change the fonts. So I don't really know what font I'm gonna do. Usually I always do the next font. That's like the main font I use in a lot of my videos videos. So I found a font I liked. I'm going to be using Open Sans Bold Italicized and as you can see we got it right here. So the next thing I usually do is press Control Alt Home and that'll center the anchor point. And this works for any layer by the way. A lot of people don't know this but if you have a layer and the anchor point's not in the center whether it's images, masks, or whatever just press Control Alt Home and it'll put it right in the center. So now that we got our text the next thing I'm going to do is just Control Shift D and uh, we're just going to start laying this out on the screen or on the timeline. Now it doesn't really matter where it's positioned right now because obviously we're going to change and animate the position throughout the whole edit so uh, we'll just start here by doing this so as you can see the word is like right here when it comes on and then right here is where he says wanna so i'm going to duplicate that Control c Control v then i'm going to Control shift d this as well and then we're going to go on to the next word so let's do this right here uh, as you can see, we got the next word right here, and uh, these layers right now are 2D, but we'll be um, making them 3D in the future, so that's for when we're animating it. So as you can see, we got this so far, and uh, you just want to do this for every word pretty much, so it shouldn't take too long. This is a pretty fast process. So that's what we got so far. As you can see, it's not really that cool, not that interesting because what we'll probably be doing in the future is we'll have like it animate from shoddy wanna talk to and like it'll go like in the pattern like that. And uh, for the most part, that's kind of boring. So what we can do is we can do different rotations in it as well. So what I mean by this is the next thing he says is shoddy wanna talk to me. And then instead of just having it be like right here, we could do whatever we want with it. We could put it up here. We could put it down here. We could do whatever. Or what I like to do, which is the part that I was talking about earlier, is making these 3D layers. So all you gotta do is go down here in this part, and then just make sure the 3D box is checked. You can also enable motion blur now if you want to. Uh, it's not gonna have an effect now, but that's because we don't have any movement. So we'll just put that there. And then now that we got it as a 3D layer, if we press R on our keyboard, we have the option to do different types of rotation. So Z rotation will be rotating it like this, almost like either clockwise or counterclockwise. And then X rotation is like this. 
and then Y rotations like this. Uh, we'll be doing the X and Y rotations later, but for now, let's just do a Z rotation since this is the easiest to demonstrate right now. So I'll just do negative 90 on here. And as you guys can see, it's pretty vertical. So we could really just like plop it up there and see how that looks if we want. So that looks kind of cool, but I feel like we need some more movement. So let's, we'll change it from me to right. And then the next one after that is now. So we'll put that there. We'll go back, press R on our keyboard, and then we can just type in like 180. And then that'll just obviously, you know, make it 180 degrees, which is upside down. So we can really put this wherever. We could put it like right here if we want to. That might look kind of cool. And uh, because we have each word on a different layer, we have complete control. So if we want to, we can just resize, resize it like this. Yeah, that's pretty cool as well. So now it's pretty basic, but later in the tutorial, we'll be going into more 3D. For the 3D, we'll be having having different like depth of field blurs and stuff like that. So let's just see how this looks so far. So the next thing he's gonna say is now. So let's, let's add a now somewhere on here. Another tip is that you want the rotations and like the changes in it to be kind of subtle. You don't want it to be too dramatic because what we're doing is it's gonna go shoddy, wanna talk to, and then it's gonna rotate to me and then it's gonna rotate to right. Now the reason it'll go to me first and then right is because me is 90 degrees and then right is another 90 degrees. Because if you have it go straight from, you know, right side up to upside down, it'll be really fast and kind of too dramatic unless you want that impact but i want it to ease into it so it'll go it'll rotate 90 and then rotate more 90 and then right here as well we got the next one which is going to be the word now as you can see it's another 90 degrees because if we have this just right side up it'll probably be too dramatic but we can of course you know if you want that impact if you want it to be super fast movement you can of course do that so as you can see it's pretty solid so far but uh, it's not too cool. As you can see, we only, we're only we only working on like one dimension. It's still kind of 2D. We haven't really gotten to 3D yet. Obviously the layers are 3D, but we haven't done any X or Y rotations. So that's what we're gonna do next. So the next verse he says is, I don't even know you, I'ma smoke loud. So let's start with that. So the next thing he says is, I don't even know you. And he says it kind of fast. So it would be kind of cool if we have each of them on one word. But because he says it really fast, we could honestly just put it on one layer and then do some effects now. So I said step three is the effects, which, you know, on step three, we will get more into effects. But for now, we could even start with like a simple animation fade. So we could just go here over to animation. Uh, I don't know why I have million presets. But uh, if you go here, animate, uh, text you'll see a bunch of anime in presets and then it's pretty self-explanatory uh, Anime in will have them come in and then animate out will just have them like go out Yeah, you can really just slap any of these on here if you want or you could find some third-party presets online I probably could make a tutorial in the future about how to make these like text presets The main ones I usually use are fade up characters. This is kind of similar to just like a linear wipe except it's more for like text. All you gotta do is just select it, drag it on your layer, which I did just now. So he says it kind of fast, so we're probably gonna wanna make this shorter right here. And uh, if you don't have this already open, just press U on your keyboard. You will bring up any other keyframes that you have on your uh, layer. So uh, yeah, let's just see how this looks. So yeah, that flows kind of well. We'll have you be its own layer as well. So yeah, you kind of want to switch it up and you want you don't want to have just everything be on this. The next thing I'm going to show you how to do right now is we're going to be expanding into 3D typography. So as you can see right now, it's all just flat. It's only like 2D. But uh, if we bring this Z right here, which this isn't really a good way of doing it. The better way would be to press P on your keyboard with the layer selected and then actually mess with individual values. Because if you just drag it and move it around, it might screw screw up with some of the um the other positions so yeah x is obviously x y is y and then z is z so for this part i kind of want it to be a little closer to the camera like this and we're going to be leaving it the same size for now because as you can see we're going to have the camera zoom backwards and when it zooms backwards this back here will get smaller and this will get normal so it's an actual like real 3d perspective it's not just scaling so now that we got everything pretty much the way we want it now we can actually move on to step two and step two is still a mix of step one you're still going to be wanting to add more like words and stuff later on so don't think 
think that we just, you know, we can add more stuff in the future. We're going to be working with both of them at the same time. So what you're going to want to do is go to the top, go to layer, new camera. And uh, this stuff doesn't really matter right now. You can adjust this later. This is kind of just like your focal length. Think of it like field of view almost. If you've used a real camera before, it's pretty much exactly like that. So now that we got that, we're going to also go to layer null object and a null is essentially just like it's kind of just like a layer that does really nothing except have values i mean that's a really weird way of putting it but for this instance that's pretty much what it's going to be doing so once you get the camera you're going to want to parent the camera to the null it'll be basically the camera is affected by the null so once you have the camera on your thing and you have the null you're going to go down here and you'll see this little squiggly line drag on it if you click and drag select the null with it that's pretty much parented to the null now and you want to make sure your null is also a 3d object now, if we move the null object, which I shouldn't be doing it by that way, I should be pressing P and then doing this. As you can see, if we move the null object, it moves everything. And now we actually do have like a full 3D scene here. So now that we're on to step two, the next thing we're gonna be doing is actually animating the motion between them. There's a lot of ways to do this. The way I usually do it is uh, I'll press P on my keyboard. We're gonna wanna click on position, click the keyframe icon, right click on this, press separate dimensions. Otherwise, all your stuff's gonna be linked into one channel, which you don't want. So as you can see, yeah, we have control over each different channel or um, position value. And then same with R. So if I press U on the keyboard, go to this frame. If we go here, press R as well. Uh, we don't really need to do this right now, but we can do it anyway because, you know, we don't really have much rotation for the first few words. But uh, as you can see, it's kind of looking a little bit confusing here. I guess we'll start off by having it like before everything starts well, now that we have it um now that shoddy's on screen as you can see let's start animating to that so we're just gonna drag the z position here and then we're just gonna move it over here and uh, you also when you want like scale movement you want to do it with z position this goes for both the camera null and the words as well because scale is actually going to adjust only the scale of like the layer you know what i mean because like as you can see it's smaller the best way to think of it is like the text layers are kind of just like an image like it's just a 2d flat thing and then you can obviously scale it down but it's not going to be further back because obviously if something scaled down it'll look further back but in this instance because it's 3d there's a difference with it so this is the movement we got right now and uh, as you can see, he says wanna, so we're gonna move the, the little uh, X position there as well. So it should look like this. Now, as you can see, it's very linear, but that's because we haven't done any of the work on the graph. So we're just gonna wanna keep doing this. Uh, I think he says talk. Yeah, he says talk right here. And uh, because as you can see, it's going down, we're gonna go back to the first part where he says wanna make a keyframe for Y. Otherwise, if we don't do that, what will happen is it'll already start going down before it even gets to wanna. Because as you can see, it's going like that. If we delete it, it'll be like that. So yeah, you want to make sure every every word has like a keyframe for each value you're adjusting before and after. And as you can see, now he says two. So we're going to do it like this. Move that there. Now, the next thing he says is me. So we're going to go here, place another one there. And because it's uh, going upwards, we're going to add a Y keyframe uh, before. So like I said, you want to have it before and after. So we'll go up here. And now, as you can see, it should look like this. It's a little laggy because, you know, I'm trying to preview this and record. But uh, as you can see, this is where the first rotation will come in. So we'll go here and the... Uh, oh, that's the position. Z rotation would be like rotating the actual screen counter or uh, clockwise. So we'll be doing it like this. And uh, I had the me at negative 90, so we'll do negative 90 as well. So it's equal. And as you can see, now it's starting to look good. Now the next thing we did was also a 180. So we'll do negative 180 as well. You got to make sure you have the negative too like 180 and negative 180 they're they, they they flip it the same way except if you have it going from negative 90 to just straight up 180 it'll be fast because instead of going see how it's going uh it's rotating counterclockwise if you have it at just 180 and not negative it'll be going counterclockwise so it'll be going me and then it'll go fast as hell the other way so it gets to the the same angle pretty much that probably sounds confusing as hell but if you make that mistake you'll know what i'm talking about so it's a simple fix just make sure your negatives are correct same here as well so instead of having it go 270 we'll go negative 270 even though it'll look the exact same at the end it'll still make a difference in the actual transition to it so let's just move this over here and let's see how this looks 
As you can see, it's still linear, but we'll make it smoother in the in step three, pretty much. For this part, we're gonna have it go a full 360, so we'll have it go negative 360, which should just make this right here negative one. That's pretty much like a whole number, and then that's like the actual like rotation in degrees. And uh, this is where he says, I don't even know you. So for this, it, it's a little longer, so we'll have it drag out more. But uh, this is the part that had the Z position. So if we bring this back and uh, move the position more as well. So let's just get this like this. But as you can see, it's like a 3D perspective. It's not just like 2D, which is what we want because it'll look a lot better. So it's starting to look pretty sick now. Let's take a look. I think I messed up though, actually. I, I did make a big mistake because as you can see, it's already zooming out from like the very start. And that's because of that mistake I talked about earlier when not adding your rotations or um, your positions right before. So what I'll do is I'll copy this keyframe over here because this is zoomed in the right way. And then we'll go um, here to where it should be zooming out. So as you can see, that'll just fix it right here. You can also see it in the graph editor too, which is like right here. So if you go to the graph editor, Better. you can see how all your values look this will be a lot more useful later on so yeah let me turn on cash before playback so my thing doesn't lag and uh let's check this out yeah it's still lagging even with cash before playback what we can actually do is disable motion board that might help a little bit so if you check that box motion board will be disabled so it might run better let's take a look as you can see, that actually did fix it. So if you're lagging, yeah, just turn off motion blur here. So yeah, the next thing he says is you. So we'll add you somewhere in here as well. I guess we could have it go like here. So we'll put it there. Let's put it up here, rotate this, and then do 90 degrees. Oh, not 90, 270, sorry. Yeah, there we go. I don't think I mentioned this earlier, but you want to do the rotations on the actual values and not orientation. Orientations only if like, like you're not doing 3D because other than that, orientation will just screw up everything. Like I'm gonna be real, I don't even know why it's like on here. It's kind of useless since you got these. But uh, if you're doing like 2D, I guess you can use it. But yeah, yeah, don't use orientation. So this is when he says you. So I guess we'll zoom in more and uh we're gonna rotate this as well we'll do negative 90 as well and uh you don't want to change that first value because other otherwise it'll just reset to the complete default which would be a lot of rotation so yeah we'll do it like this and uh we'll see how this looks and like i said it's pretty linear now but we'll have that movement so you actually see what the words are saying later so the next thing he says after this is I'm a smoke loud. So for this part, what I was thinking of doing a uh, different rotation. So you can actually tell it's 3D. So, I mean, you can tell now, but I was thinking we do X rotations, which is like this. Now, to be fair, X rotations are a lot harder to animate than like normal rotations because uh, the null object is, as you can see, it's kind of like, no, it's not centered completely, but I'll show you how to fix that later. Okay, guys, for this next step, what I want to try and do is I want to add some wire rotation in here as well so it's pretty simple to do we're just gonna make a new text layer and then we'll just change the rotation on it so it shows up on this side so it's more like 3d looking but before we can do that we need to fix the camera so i kind of forgot to do this earlier but what you're gonna want to do is you want the camera's position to be zero you want all the values on the camera to be zero because what's happening right now is if i rotate this you can see it's pivoting a certain area which is not what we want at all so it's kind of pretty I mean, it's okay. I mean, if you want to have it pivot something, you can. But in this instance, we don't want to have it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go here to our Z position. And uh, as you can see, the camera, it has some values in right here. And uh, that value right there, the third one, is the Z position. So we're going to want to select all these keyframes right here. Select them all. And uh, let's just go over here. So yeah, make sure you have all of them selected. And then we're just going to drag this down. And you'll notice there's like a little box above my cursor that has the the little minus thing it's got like a little triangle the little delta symbol so we're just gonna drag that to where it's pretty much what we uh what our z position currently is so ours is 2.666.7 so we'll just drag it like pretty much that amount it's not gonna make too much of a difference but uh, as you can see now the whole edit is pretty much far back which is kind of good because now we can delete the value on the actual camera so now we're pretty much back to normal as you can see the camera is how it was before except this time we're not gonna have that uh pivot rotation now as you can see it still looks kind of weird but that's because of our focal length 
which uh, I told you at the beginning of the video, it's kind of like a field of view. So if it looks a little disorienting, you can mess with it later. Now we're pretty much ready to start um, doing the rest of this. He says, I don't even know you. I'm a smoke loud. So we'll have him we'll add the little Ima here. And uh, let me make sure we delete that effect right there. The range selector. Yeah, yeah, we don't want we don't want a range selector. So we'll keep that like that. Uh, I think I need to leave it on, actually. But yeah, we're just going to have it like that. Make sure it's always at 100%. And uh, for this one, we'll do 90 on here. A and then this one as well. We'll do 90 as well. So yeah, that's what we got right here. So if we rotate, we rotate this, you'll notice we don't really see anything. That's kind of, you know, that's kind of how it's supposed to be. So yeah. So we got the text where we want it. And now we're going to animate to it. You can't really see it on screen because like it's flat, you know. So we'll just keep it right here. So he says I'm a right here. So let's go here and uh, we'll, we'll move the position like this. And as you can see, now you can see it. Oh wait, before we do that, make sure every keyframe right here is checked because we're gonna be uh, actually messing with this value. Before we didn't do any of this rotation. We didn't do any Y rotations, but now we're actually gonna do Y rotations. We'll make this 90 and uh, it's kind of hard to see what the hell is going on, but bear with me here. So what we're gonna do now, we need to move the position to where you can actually actually you know actually see it so right here this is what we're gonna do so it's kind of confusing but once you get the hang of it you'll get it all right we'll have this go up here and uh, we'll move this right here as well let's go like this and like this and i'm not doing the actual like values with the p key because if you're trying to grab the z one it's kind of hard but uh, if you're grabbing these other ones it's 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 not as hard it's kind of easier to do so yeah let's do it like this and now we're just back to positioning everything we'll put it in the center like right here for this one we'll also need a rotate this as well yeah it's gonna start getting more hectic the more layers and the more transitions you do the more hectic it'll be so let's see how this looks now as you can see it's still kind of wonky here but that's because it's like doing a weird rotation from here to going here z rotation i don't really think would do much in this instance all right delete the x and then we'll do the z rotation instead let's see how this looks yeah, that looks a lot better. Okay. Yeah, I, I realized really quickly like something was up. So what we did was we rotated with the X um, rotation when we should have done the Z. Little stuff like that does make a difference because what I think was happening was it's basically rotating the wrong axis to get to the same result. I mentioned it earlier how it's kind of like having a 180 versus a negative 180. Like, yeah, it'll look the same at the end, but like the transition to get to it is a little wonky. So that's what that was. So if that does happen and you try Try a different rotation. So as you can see, now it's a lot smoother. Next thing he says is I'm a smoke. I did mess up early in the tutorial though. I forgot to tell you guys to make the camera zero because we wouldn't have had to uh, lower all this stuff. Cause like, as you guys saw, I had to, this was like a lot higher. I had to drag it all the way down. You wouldn't have to do any of that dragging if the position was already zero. So yeah, let's just make sure this is how we want it like this. I think this needs to be more over here. When he says loud, we could have another rotation axis as well. So as you can see, we assist smoke right now but we'll change this to loud i think this is the one axis we haven't done yet which is the y axis so we'll do we'll have the last part be a y axis so to simplify what it's basically doing is think of my hand as like the camera an x rotation would be like this where like like if there's text here an x rotation would be there's text like here as well a y rotation would be like that all right guys so i'm gonna have to backtrack because my mic was muted the past like 10 minutes but uh, i'll explain basically what happened where i left off was uh, i was explaining you guys to how to do rotation as you can see we got this over here i kind of did like a little hand gesture and I, I accidentally bumped the mute button on my mic so what i was explaining while my mic was muted was how to smoothen all the transitions so what you're going to want to do is select every keyframe by pressing u on your keyboard with the null selected right clicking and then go to keyframe assistant easy ease or you can just press f9 which is what i did back then so yeah press f9 select them all what i did here was this is kind of the longest and most tedious part of the the whole process but uh you're just gonna want to smoothen each thing so if you've never used a graph before the flatter it is the less curvy it is the more smoother and less movement there is so as you can see this is sharp right here meaning there's gonna be a lot of movement here so let me show you an example if i you know 
lower that. As you can see, there's a really sharp, really sharp cut there, which is not what we want. And another thing is some of your words might be off center. So it's, uh, I recommend turning on title and uh, action safe right here. So this is what it looks like without it. And then that's with it on. You can also do grid as well, except uh, I rarely ever use grid, but if it helps you, it helps you. So yeah, I usually just recommend having this on so you can center everything. Yeah, you just want to adjust these, make sure every single word is centered and uh, smooth. And you want to do this for the whole part. So yeah, I'll just continue where I left off before I realized my mic was muted. So as you can see right here, yeah, I kind of, I got up to here before uh, I realized. So yeah, I'm just going to go here. And as you can see, it's kind of like not centered. So we'll center this out as well. We'll drag this out here because it's kind of like a really long shot. So, you know, a little subtle movement wouldn't be too bad. So we can do it like this. And then right here, it's kind of like really uh, kind of dramatic as well. So like... Yeah. So yeah, that right there isn't smooth at all. So let's try and smooth. Yeah, let's try and smoothen this out. So I think what we could do is drag this keyframe more over there, drag that more over there, and then drag it like this. Now it's probably not this axis that is making it like really sharp like that. We'll probably have to go through all these others and figure out which one will look the best when you smoothen it out. Yeah, see that didn't really make too much of a difference with it. But that's like I said, that's because we're we're doing the wrong axes. So yeah, this part is gonna be kind of time consuming and a little tedious because you got to do this for each axis. And as you can see, this part right here is not even centered. So we'll make this longer so there's more movement. So it's not just all sharp. We'll drag another keyframe there. And you can always add more keyframes throughout the thing just to uh, make it more like, you know, just have more control and be more precise with your movement. So as you can see, like this is what it was at before. We got to drag it make sure it's centered. So yeah, you want every word to be centered like that. So as you can see, it's kind of coming together. It'll look a lot better once we do every axis. But for now, I actually really like how this is turning out. So yeah, you just want to make sure every axis is adjusted and modified. I think the X axis is pretty much done because, you know, I got it how I like it. So now on to the next axis, which is the um, the Y axis. So yeah, like I said, this part is pretty tedious, pretty time consuming. Yeah, see right here, the X axis isn't even centered properly. So we'll move it down like that. And uh, right here, this is the part that's kind of like probably going to be a little hard because it's like a really dramatic movement. You want to keep playing it back over and over until you get it looking good because like I said, you want to you want to spend your time with this. You want to make sure everything's adjusted properly. So yeah, right here we might want to add another keyframe just so we get more precise movement like that maybe. You can also full screen the graph by pressing the tilde key or the grave key. The grave or tilde key is just that little swiggly line above the escape. So yeah, let's move this like that. Move it like that. And that looks pretty good so far but only only the preview will tell the truth so let's see if it actually does look good so yeah x-axis y-axis i think they're pretty much done now the z-axis i think the rotations are what's making the the rest of the edit look good i feel like the rotations make the biggest difference but for now let's just keep doing the axes yeah, right here, this is going to have a big effect because it's actually doing a lot of movement here. So let's just do it like this. Another thing I want to do is I feel like it ends too subtly on loud. Yeah, that's too subtle. So we can add an X position, have this go up just a slight bit like that. Uh, curve that down. Y position, same thing here. We'll have it go up a little bit. And uh, I always do this for pretty much every graph, you know, like not even just typography, like edits, you know, velocity, pan crop. I always just have it end really slowly. You never want it to just end like, you know, too abruptly like that. And as you can see, that wasn't even curved properly. That should look a little bit better. My help a lot actually so i think z position is done as well now on to the x rotation did we even do x rotation i don't even think we did x rotation at all on here which is interesting i, I thought we did but i i think it's mainly just the y rotation that made the difference over here yeah, so Y rotation was when it went into 3D from 2D. And uh, I always call it 2D, but I don't mean 2D. I just mean like how it's flat and it hasn't rotated any other axis. Because before, the whole first part is Z. On the second part, like when he starts saying the second bars, that's when like we actually started doing the other rotations. So yeah, that looks good so far. And now on to the last one, which is Z rotation. So for this, we'll just do the same thing we've been doing for everything else. Bring it out like this. And then, yeah. And obviously, 
I'm not really looking at the preview on how it looks. Obviously, this will probably look ass. And if it does look ass, then we just keep adjusting it till we get the result we're going for. So most of the time, that's how my typography usually looks like, though. It's usually it usually is flat for each keyframe, but that's just the way I place my keyframes. But let's take a look. Let's see how it looks. That looks pretty smooth, actually. That looks a lot smoother than I thought it would. For just barely doing that in like 10, 20 minutes, that's not bad at all. That looks pretty good. Obviously, I've said this a bunch. I'll say it again. You got to really tweak it, though. You got to modify until you get it looking perfect. Not perfect, but you at least don't want to rush through it. You really want to spend your time on this. So I think now that our whole thing is pretty smooth, I want to do one last thing. This is kind of stepping into uh, part three of the tutorial, which is the effects. Now, obviously, you can just have it spin around a bunch of words, you know, have it spin to words, look cool, do rotations, whatever. But you really do have complete control over how it looks. So I'm going to show you just one example of another thing you can do. I don't do this too often, but when I do, I really do like this. I don't know if I mentioned it while my mic was muted, but basically you can actually animate like the actual text layers themselves. Because so far we've only ever animated the, the camera movement, but we haven't animated text yet. Unless you consider the little fade preset we used earlier in the video which you know i don't really consider animating that's just a preset we slapped on so for this we're gonna actually animate the text so let me delete this layer we're gonna grab duplicate this the reason i duplicate this one is because it's already like in the proper position and i'm gonna add the next verse which is i'm at the top because he says i'm at the top and you're like what yeah you get what i mean so we're gonna do that except for this one i'm gonna lower the size since the size is lower i'm gonna bring it closer like that we can make the size even lower actually we'll do like 22 yeah like that okay so what i was thinking was instead of just having you know camera moving to the word let's have the word move to the camera you get what i mean so let's try that so yeah we're gonna do basically what i just said right now we're gonna have the word animate to the camera instead of the camera animate to to the word so i'm gonna control alt home on the text just to make sure that it's actually you know the anchor point is centered and uh, let's try animating the text this time instead of the camera so we'll add a position keyframe on the text we'll keyframe it right click separate dimensions you guys know what we did earlier we're gonna do that again so now we're just gonna animate it so let's see so yeah this is where he says i'm and then the next thing he says is at the top all right, so we'll move that there. The next thing he says is at. So we'll move at to the center of the frame like this. So yeah, next thing he says is the and uh, yeah, there we go. And actually, I don't want him to have top in here. I just want him to say I'm at the. Now, I think that might mess up the positioning because we animated it with top. So we could just add a bunch of spaces like I did just to like fill in the gap there. Or you could just, you know, reanimate it. But, you know, you'll probably be a lot more prepared than I am. I'm kind of just like, I'm not half-assing the tutorial, but like I, I didn't really plan the whole layout of how I wanted it. So yeah, the next thing he says is top. I'm going to animate this going out as well. And I don't know why there's a P there. There's a, there's a letter P there for some reason. We'll just remove that and add a space. So as you can see, this time the text is animating to the camera. So we already separated the dimensions. So now we're just going to do what we did for the camera, but on the text this time. So I think we need to move this more over here because it's going by too slow. But you guys get what I mean. So as you can see, this should look pretty cool. And now he's saying top. Now what I was thinking we do for top is we'll have a sort of rack focus. If you don't know what a rack focus is, we're going to have it be way off in the distance. So he says, I'm at the top. And then for I'm at the top, we're going to put it way off in the background like this. What we're going to do is we're going to have depth of field blur. We'll blur everything in the foreground. First, everything in the background will be blurred and you'll only see I'm at the top. Then we'll blur that part of the video and then only top will show. You get what I mean? So yeah, this is where he's says i'm at the top so we'll add a keyframe separate dimensions uh let's go to where the goes off screen because that's when he says top and then we'll have it there and then we'll have it down here and it'll be like i'm at the top you know what let's actually drag this out more we'll easy ease it drag it out move this over here more and then we'll place another keyframe here and drag this lower so that it actually like yeah, like, so it could actually basically just looks like it's like coming up. You know what I mean? 
So after he says that, he says, and you're like, wow. And I think we can go back animating the camera because I feel like it'll get too repetitive. We just have the text moving on screen then. All right, guys, I thought we did every rotation, but apparently we left one out, which I thought we already did, but I guess we didn't. That's the X rotation. I remember saying like, oh yeah, we'll do an X rotation, which I thought we did. I guess we just forgot it or not you guys, I forgot it. So we'll actually do the X rotation now. So the X rotations like that, that actually doesn't look that good. We'll do negative 90 instead, so it goes upwards. So yeah, as you can see, if we zoom out, you can kind of see something over there, which is like the text. So yeah, it should be like, I'm at the top. And then like he looks up or not he looks up the camera looks up and then that's when you see the and you're like wow so what we'll do here is we'll bring you up yeah you'll see it over there we'll bring it up some more and then we'll bring it that way as well so yeah, this is kind of a really scuffed way of doing it. Yeah, as you can see, we just want it to be in frame. So let's just keep going up some more. Actually, we could have just honestly actually typed it in. But anyway, we got it nevertheless. So which one is it? Is it you? No, it's X. I'm stupid. I'm sorry. I'm so dumb. I was going to say I'm sorry, but nah, I I'm just dumb. All right, we'll do negative 90. Yes, because that's what we did for the camera rotation. And you're like, okay, now that we got that there, uh, yeah, we're going to move the y position now i don't know if i mentioned this earlier but when you start messing with different axes the positions and rotation values don't act the same see at the start z was like moving forward and backwards now z is moving it up and down because we've completely switched like the whole perspective the whole axis the camera's not in its normal position you know what i mean however it's still in like 3d space so i don't know if that makes any sense but it's kind of hard to process but if you get what i mean you get what i mean it'll take some getting used to in some practice but eventually you'll understand how it works because like I said you're flipping the whole camera around So obviously the text position is not going to be the same as how it was at the default position So I think the last thing we're gonna do is just simply this last line where he says and you're like wow Now I want the wow to actually be upside down what axis? Oh Z. Okay. Okay Z should be 180 then yeah now it just says mom. All right Anyway, I know at the start of the video I said you don't want to go straight from like 0 to 180 unless you want impact and in this case we do want impact because usually you could do 90 it'll be less movement for it but because this is the final like word we're gonna do for this tutorial let's add some impact on it so yeah we want this to be long too because we want to really mess with the curve so it's extra smooth you know what i mean like right here see like we want it to be really long spread apart like that so as you can see it's spread apart but we want it to like have sharp movement on the curves so like that now i think it still needs to be further apart so we'll try it like that maybe so yeah i think that's when he says wow so we'll just add another keyframe in the middle drag that up drag that over there so yeah i'm gonna full screen this drag that over there and we're just gonna keep messing with it till we get what we want now I'm gonna mess with the Z position. It should be the Z position. Yeah, it is the Z position. Oh, I did not mean to do that. Yeah, you gotta be careful when dragging the actual keyframes in the graph editor because it might lag. So as you can see, we'll drag the actual number value over there. So now that we added the last few parts of the whole edit, now we gotta go back here. I know this is kind of lame because like nobody really wants to do this. Now we gotta go back to animating the uh, little transitions. So I think this is the main one that we need to do. I don't really think the others will make too much of a difference. So that's just the one looking up. I think we should move this back actually. All right guys, I think we're pretty much done with movement. Let's take a look at this. I like it. I think that movement's not the best I could do. It's not bad. I, I really like this. All right, guys. So now that we got the movement done, now it's actually time for just effects. So I talked about this earlier, the depth of field blur. All right. So if you don't know what depth of field is, it's the blur when objects get further away. It's like a camera blur. So we're going to add that on here. So if we go to our camera, we haven't even touched any of the camera settings, but uh, if you go to camera, 
turn depth of field on. Now, you might need to be in full quality to notice, but as you can see, it's kind of blurry. But yeah, if you increase the aperture, it'll get even like blurrier. Now, we're gonna need a keyframe, the focus distance right here. So we're gonna animate this. The reason I say that is because objects are gonna go in and out of focus like this, as you can see. Because like I said, the further away, it like the, it's basically blur that's based on position. If you don't know what depth of field is, right now it looks pretty normal, except for right here. And that's because it's moving the Z distance so we'll add a keyframe here we'll go here to where like you know that's in focus and then we'll make the I don't even know in focus now we can make the depth of field stronger as well which for this instance I will do because uh you know the background's just still too strong but uh yeah now this is slightly blurred so yeah as you can see now that's blurred and then uh yeah we can go here as well i'll copy this i'll go here so yeah you're gonna want to easy ease this as well and just animate it throughout like whenever objects are getting closer and such you can graph editor it you don't really need a graph editor it unless like you're, you're doing a lot of movement that's like super really precise then yeah maybe you do need to graph editor it like like this part right here actually i think this part will need a graph editor but yeah mo majority of the time i don't feel like you need to go all out in the in the focus distance graph editor so as you can see he says i'm at the and then this is when i was talking about doing the rack focus so as that one leaves and top goes into focus everything else loses focus so as you can see like that and he's like and hey, you're alive wow so let's see how this looks like with the focus let me easy ease it first though because you usually always want to easy ease most of the time so yeah right here i feel like we'll need a actually work on the depth of field. Yeah, I don't know why it looks so doofy right here. I think we adjusted the focus distance pretty well. Let's take a look. So that looks pretty good. It's kind of exactly how I how I pictured it looking. I mean, a little worse than how I pictured, but it gets the job done. As you can see, every word is in frame. Everything's in focus. So like, obviously, you know, you're not going to see that in focus and this board. But yeah, as you can see, it's pretty much how I wanted to do it. So you can go all out with effects now. Like I said, every word is on its own layer. So if you want to add transitions on each word, like, yeah, see right now, I mean, it's cool, whatever he says right now nah 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 let's make it better all right let's make it start zero and then like it just goes Phew. you know you could do this for any layer you want you could scale them opacity fade them add you know your sapphire transitions on them uh regular transitions glows vignettes whatever you want to do a cc a background so yeah i guess we can start doing effects now i'm not gonna go too crazy on the effects because like i said this is only just a tutorial you know you could go all out you know you could slap saber on every word if you want to you know you know what i mean you can do whatever so I guess I'll just start simple. I'll probably just make a vignette and uh, maybe a background, but that's pretty much all I want to do for this. So yeah, we'll add S vignette. I'm gonna control Y, make it solid here, place the solid down there. I guess we could just add any background. I guess we could do like a gradient ramp. We'll add a gradient ramp, make it whatever color you want. I guess we'll do blue like that. Mm. I mean, you can, all right? This is just the first effect I thought of. But yeah, we can add trap code shine on here if we want to. Uh, if this was for a client or like an actual editing project, I would never use any of this stuff. But for tutorial's sake, let's just try and make it look somewhat cool. You know what I mean? Okay, let me put the shine just to spice it up. We'll add a, we'll make it blue, all right? I, I would like blue. I actually have a better idea. Let's make every word a different color. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. That's gonna take a while, but screw it let's do it all right guys so i colored every single word and i also add av club on one of the texts so yeah let's just see what we got so far i know i said earlier that we don't need magic bullet looks but now there's a bunch of colors now it might actually have an effect instead of just you know just being all white colors all right guys so it's been a few minutes guys and i'll show you what i added i think i'm pretty much done now because i don't really want to add much more stuff because i'm not gonna lie i'm not really feeling this edit entirely but uh what i added was i added some shake some s shake you could probably do actual camera shake like in 3d by like adding a wiggle expression or some other stupid expression like that and uh there's also 
of the vignette. We got some S rays. We got some VC color vibrance, S flicker, and um, and yeah, we got the gradient ramp, and that's pretty much all I've added so far. So let's take a look and see how this all looks out. Obviously, you could go into so much more detail and so much more effort. I made this in about two hours, but if you spend a week on this or so, and uh, you really add some effects on your text layers, or you get really creative with your camera movement, you can make some incredible work with this. But, you know, that's the tutorial, guys. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, guys. I make videos on After Effects and all sorts of other cool stuff, so you don't want to miss this, so make sure to subscribe. My editing Discord will also be in the description down below, and so is my editing pack, so if you want to buy my presets and my project files, be sure to check it out. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Take care, and I'll catch you guys in the next video, boys. Peace out.